Okay, so my name is Laura Skilton. I've been involved in the project management of the Scarlet project and now I'm working on the Scarlet Plus project, which you can find information about on the blog. This meeting we've just had was the Scarlet evaluation, our final meeting is the Scarlet project, and we've been looking at things like what would we do differently, uh, what are the barriers, what next in teaching with AR, what's the uniqueness of Manchester, um, and also about the project management of Scarlet. So I'm just going to pass the iPad around now and film a few people talking about what we've been talking about today. I'm Jackie Carter and I'm the project director for Scarlet and I also look after learning and teaching services and projects at uh, Minas at the University of Manchester. Um, what I really want to contribute to this final evaluation is to say that the formation of this Scarlet team was a deliberate attempt to bring together academics, technologists, content specialists and project management experts to show how a mixed team approach could provide an experience that was more than the sum of its parts. And at the final evaluation meeting here today, I think we're all clear that that has indeed been achieved. So each partner in the project has worked to their strengths throughout the last year. There's always been a clear aim to put the pedagogy first, and it's not always been clear whether or not that's been achieved, but I think again from today's meeting it's reassuring to hear that it has, and that the pedagogy has always driven this project, not the technology. So that's reassuring. Well, in terms of a personal reflection on how this project has differed perhaps to others I've been involved with over the years, I'd have to say that this one has had tremendous energy, enthusiasm and vision from the outset and a very clear remit, and that was to see whether AR could enhance the student experience using Special Collections material. And others will talk about what that means in practice. It's achieved an enormous amount in a relatively short period of time, and I think this was as a result of three things. Firstly, it had good project management and maintained momentum throughout. Secondly, it built bridges between worlds and everybody who was in on the team has brought their networks to exploit them for the project um, means. And thirdly, we've had amazing content and really passionate and professional people to work with. I'm John Hodgson. I work within Special Collections within the John Lyons Library. Um, there are three points that I'd like to make. Um, the first is that, um, following on from what Jackie has just said, um, we've really benefited from the, the three-way partnership between my master library and academics. And in particular, I'd like to single out the project management expertise of my master. We've learned a huge amount um, about how a project should be run. Uh, it, it's been absolutely um, seamless. And um, we've Hopefully that will benefit us for future projects. The second point I'd like to make is that um, Scarlet has focused a lot of attention on special collections, particularly those at the library, which have traditionally been seen as rather fusty and fuddy-duddy and fairly averse to innovative IT. Um, and we, we've certainly lagged quite a long way behind uh, our colleagues in other areas of information technology and information science. Um, but suddenly, because of Scarlet, there's been a lot of focus on technology within special collections, and we're now seen as very much the leading edge. Um, and hopefully, that's something that we can continue. Uh, it's not just a flash in the pan, but we can maintain our um, newly won reputation for being innovative with, with IT in the information and heritage sectors. Um, I suppose that takes me on to the third point, which is that it's very important that we take Scarlet forward um, and that we um, make our collections more accessible to students and visitors. And we're certainly very keen to develop further augmented reality applications with our academic colleagues at the university. Obviously this is going to require a lot of investment in terms of staff time and resources, infrastructure. Um, and we need to make sure that it's scalable. And I think, generally speaking, um, we need to be looking at um, generic applications rather than um, highly tailored individual applications so that they have a broad application across a range of uh, courses. Um, but it does give us a fantastic opportunity to um, work with the other cultural assets within the, within the university, such as the Whitley Park Gallery Manchester Museum. 
um, and it, it, it gives the university a chance to maximise the potential of these rich resources that, it, that it's looking after and to make, it, make itself different from its competitors. So, Gaia and Roberto, we've heard um, that this has been a mixed team and you represent the, two of the academics, two of the three academics in the team. I wonder if you can tell us a little bit about the journey that you've been on with your students throughout the Scarlet project from this year, but also, in answer to John's question, how you might take this forward in terms of your teaching beyond the end of the Scarlet project. Who's going to start, Gaia? Um, yeah, I'll start because I think we've had very different experiences um, in terms of our student cohorts and their response to the Scarlet Project. My final year students were, and they were interested, but in a sense they, they didn't, it, it wasn't particularly useful for them for the kind of um, learning outcomes for their course. And I think that's to do in a sense because they're, they're probably slightly more expert than the students that Roberta was working with. Um, but it's also about the nature of the object and the and the things that we were working with. So for my final year Italian students, uh, they had very high level of linguistic competence, um, they knew Dante's text very well, um, and for them it was easy for them to use professional scholarly resources outside of the app, really, to, to, to engage with the object. Um, but you had a different experience, didn't you? Yes. Um, I was uh, working with very different uh, students, that is from the first to the third year of classics and ancient history. Uh, the nature of my material, which is papyri, uh, is very peculiar. They are fragments, so we don't really have really extensive uh, texts, and they are written in ancient Greek and with an end writing that even my uh, third year Greek advanced uh, class are unable uh, really to read. So there is a huge barrier there, but a, a big appeal. Uh, what my students really liked was the possibility to go to the library and see the objects and then to come back and have all the information on that piece uh, uh, gathered together in uh, this uh, um, material that we prepared uh, on the uh, fragment, the very famous <laughs> John Gospel uh, fragment. Uh, what I'm going to do now is uh, uh, to use this technology for teaching, uh, not only as uh, something that I deliver to students, but something the students will work with. So, for instance, I'm planning to ask uh, to my uh, advanced Greek three uh, students to produce they themselves the content for developing uh, a piece on uh, some of the papyri we do have in uh, the collection. I do think that uh, this is something that I want to stress, the use of the special collections that we do have here in Manchester and technology together uh, can massively increase what we define as you know, the student's experience here. We have something that very, very few institutions in this country do have, that is special collections that range from antiquity, really, on the Babylonian uh, tablets, to uh, the contemporary. So I do think this is something that we have you know, to play with much more than we did in the past. Mm -hmm. And I think that, that, that's, the, that's the same for Italian as well. I mean, just to go back to what Roberto was saying about her students' experience, with our first year students that I used the Scarlet app with, um, they had a, a very similar experience. They were absolutely, you know, they, they, they loved, they were really impressed by Scarlet, they loved seeing the book objects, they had no experience, they didn't have the linguistic resources to be able to read Dante's Divine Comedy in a 15th century edition, but, but they were able to kind of grasp something something really special about these objects and the fact that they were in Manchester. They couldn't actually believe that they were our books and, and that's something that came up in the feedback. Um, going forward with my teaching as well, I think I'd like to, I, I'll still use it as a kind of introductory device for first years. And for the more expert students, um, I think I'm going to develop some more targeted teaching activities because we haven't really explored the potential of the page just yet. Um, and you know, the design of the book, the mise en page, 
Um, I'd like to look into ways of kind of image tagging software so students can actually research themselves elements of the layout and can produce further content for for their for their student fellow students in the class and for other people. So I'm looking at maybe image tagging software, maybe audio um, tagging as well, and trying to encourage them to make some videos because this year the students are very shy and they didn't really film uh, as as I didn't either, but I've got over that. So um, so I'm going to see if I can get students to kind of maybe talk about their editions and their own experiences working with this book too. So that would be a way of kind of taking Scarlet forward in the teaching. Can I add something on this? Because I do think that uh, uh, this ability to uh, develop contents also in a multimedia environment is something that is very important for the students now to spend then on the job market because mm -hmm. we are, I think that everyone is concerned now to give to these students experience also the, the experience of getting the more and more skills to spend them on the job market. Mm -hmm. So this is very important, I think. Absolutely. And that's something that we put into our kind of course descriptions now as well. It's something that we're very you know, concerned that the Manchester experience is not just an experience in Manchester, but that they take it with them beyond Manchester when they graduate. That's fantastic. I mean, just in terms of summing up what you said, I think I've heard from this meeting today, uh, and particularly from what you've just both said, that, that Manchester itself has gained enormously from being involved in this project. That you, we've all gained individually from that, and it really has put Manchester at the forefront in terms of using technology with special collections and developed materials. But in terms of next steps, which is really what we all want to do, because we want to embed this, I'm hearing that there's an awful lot of future potential for Manchester and future Manchester students. So I think that's something that we need to think collectively about how we can take forward.